I got 31 points for my O-Level L1 R5 and here's the story of how I bounced back. Hi, this is Kenneth and welcome to my monologue. I completed my O-Levels in 2004 and these were my grades. I got B4 for English, C6 for Combined Humanities, C5 for Mathematics, B4 for Physics, C5 for Chemistry and D7 for Chinese. That adds up to 31 points for the L1 R5 or 24 points for the L1 R4. There was no way I was qualifying for a junior college and the only two courses I qualified for in Polytechnic was nursing and electrical engineering. Now, before you continue watching, you might be thinking, what are my current circumstances? If you're looking at more traditional measures of success, I have half a million in savings, CPF and stock investments combined, or a managerial job, and I have a master's degree from an autonomous university. Just to be clear, this is not a how-to guide and I acknowledge that I might be privileged in ways that others aren't. For example, I'm living rent-free with my parents and that saves me a ton of money. If you want to write me off because of that massive privilege right there, go ahead. I've got nothing to gain from your success. I'm just here to share my journey. Since I couldn't be a scholar, I figured I'd embrace being a coolie. I considered signing on with the Navy, but it didn't make sense to sign on in exchange for the military to sponsor an ITE education, which I figured I could afford on my own just after one year of work. Instead, I started to do freelance jobs and attended courses in kayaking, sport climbing, and sailing, with the aim of entering the outdoor industry. During this time, I also stopped drawing an allowance from my parents, which required me to be more frugal. I eventually got conscripted into the army as part of the mono intake with other 18 year olds with little education. Mono intake meant I went directly to the unit for my basic military training BMP and didn't go to Pulau Tekong. Out of the entire battalion of about 200 men, only the best soldier among us would have the chance to go to CISPEC to train to be a sergeant. This experience led me to my second epiphany. My life experiences since I left school showed me that society at the time favoured those with a credential and or those with money. So achieving those two things became my goals. For some context, this was back in 2008. It would be another nine years before the Singapore Civil Service decided to stop grouping and identifying its officers by education level. So I saw these as ways to overcome the societal biases and uh, stigmas of the time. Before I ORD, I enrolled myself into the Singapore Institute of Management's Diploma and Management Studies. I chose SIM because it seemed like the most legitimate private education institute and had the most Recognition. By recognition, what I mean is that most people in my social circle had heard of it. I later chose to progress on to the RMIT Bachelor of Business Management instead of the University of London program because from my experience in school, it was clear that high stakes exams were not for me. While completing my diploma, I built on the skills I picked up during my gap year before enlistment and got myself certified as a kayaking coach and was actively coaching to earn some side income during weekends and holidays. On top of that, I was an early adopter of online shopping and would import items from overseas to sell at a tiny profit on forums like Hardware Zone. This was additional income on top of the money I made from coaching on weekends. It was at this point where I learned it makes more sense to grow your earnings rather than to save more. When I got conscripted, I only had $4 in the bank and I brought some frugal habits into the army where I would skip canteen breaks and eat cookhouse food. But it comes to a point where you really can't cut any more costs without seriously affecting your quality of life and becoming miserable. After graduating, I joined PSB Academy as an admissions officer despite the low social status that came with that kind of job title because I saw that the earning potential was high due to the pay structure that rewarded results. Working there and clocking in 12 to 14 hour days helped me to hit my student recruitment targets and I saved up my first $100,000 by the time I was 28. Despite the long work hours, I also spent my weekends creating content for a blog to generate leads. One of my how-to guides got more than 10,000 downloads and despite leaving PSB Academy in 2014, people were still calling and texting me for admissions inquiries as late as 2018. With that safety net in hand, I did a bit of job hopping, trying out roles in corporate training sales, student affairs, and even business development. Some of these roles involved pay cuts, but the learning opportunities made up for it, and the $100,000 buffer plus my frugal lifestyle meant that I could learn what I needed to move on to greener pastures without a huge change in my lifestyle. During my job hopping phase, I made sure to learn something at every job that would make me a more attractive candidate for the next job I applied for. This I feel was essential to my success and when I transitioned out of a variable income structure to a fixed one, I made use of the stability to enroll into an autonomous university and complete a master's degree. 
And that's the story of how I went from 31 points at O-Levels to become an autonomous university graduate with a managerial job and half a million dollars in net worth at age 33. Now here's the summarized version. The key to my rebound can be summarized in three points. Adopting a growth mentality, frugality, and not caring about social status. I developed a skill that I monetized, had some side hustles, got a sales job as my first job to increase my earnings, exposed myself to other areas of work by taking on additional responsibilities and job hopping. Then I enrolled into a master's degree at an autonomous university when I switched to a more stable fixed income job. Hey, thanks for watching till the end of the video. If you found value in this content, please help me out by liking the video. And if you haven't, please subscribe to the channel and turn on the notifications as well.